shall launch the proceedings, yes we will, by having a look at Goldie Rogers, the young man out of Hollywood, California, against Kim Schaaf, primarily working out of Hamilton, Ontario. He's at 240, Goldie at 228, take down by Shaw, and he got his ears boxed. How do you avoid that? That happens all the time. Well, it would be much a little bit smarter than your opponent. But I must, I must say, uh, Ed, it's, been a, it's a pleasure to be back with you again. You know, uh, you know, after last week, you know, our views were a little bit different. I know you got hostile, and I got hostile, but at the end, you know, it all worked out good because I tell you what, Benoit stole the belt, uh, from Smith, and you are mighty happy over that. I'm sure of it. I cannot subscribe to your theories. I'm five sorry, minutes, sir. Five we are at the five-minute mark, and this is a 15-minute time limit. Goldie Rogers, always dependable, always obnoxious. Nonetheless, he's quite a foe. Kim Schaub, don't know quite how to rank him yet. Uh, he's a young man who's breaking his way into the business, and he's got kind of a mean streak, though. Well, you know, uh, Kim Shaw, about 240 pounds, he hails from Hamilton, Ontario. Like you said, Ed, he's breaking into the business, and uh, he's learning the right way, the hard way, and uh, he's been taking his lumps for the last uh, maybe a month and a half, so... But the Kim Shaw will give you 125% when he's in that ring. There's not a lazy bone in his body. And I'm sure a lot of people will hear from Kim Shaw down the road. 125. Is that more than 100, I guess, is it? Excuse me? It's more than 100, 125. I, oh, it's I, more I, than 100. Yeah, okay. I just don't quite understand that. I thought 100% was the whole thing, but... Let's not dilly-dally. Let's concentrate on what's doing here and on the golden locks of Goldie Rogers. He must have a very hefty budget for bleach. Yes, uh, I'm, you know, he's a veteran, and he's been around for a few years. And what he's doing right now, a lot of people don't understand. This is what you do to kids that are breaking into professional wrestling. You punish them. That's the only way to do it, Ed Well, You punish them. You're and getting you, excited when you I, talk about punishment. Oh, well, I'm excited tonight. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited because I'm here with you. Oh, sure. I understand that. Goldie Rogers and Kim Schaub. Well past the five-minute mark, and as I mentioned, a 15-minute time limit. Oh, he caught him with a clothesline going by, and punishment, I guess, is the name of the game there. I forgot to tell the good people, my, 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 what an oversight, and you too. Lethal Larry Cameron against Ron Ritchie. Well, it's, you know, it's the highlight of Ron Ritchie's career. I talked to him earlier in the dressing room, and I asked him if he was ready. He said, Bulldog, I'm more ready than I've ever been in my life. This is the match that I don't want to let all the people down in Canada. Uh, actually, he said, this match is for Canada, the way La Larry Lethal Cameron has been knocking Canadians. He said, I'm going to go out, and he said, when the smoke clears the ring, and he says, you'll be seeing me standing there, uh, having my hand raised. But you want to know something? I doubt it very much, because I don't think Rod Ritchie's got it all. Kim Shaw hasn't got it all, as he just missed Goldie Rogers. Just a two count. There are times when I'm here with you that I wonder why we have the show. I mean, you've got it all figured out as to what's going to happen. And uh, you, you, uh, you know, you don't leave any room for doubt. What is it with you? Well, because I'm a veteran. But you're, you're wrong a lot, too. No, I'm a veteran. You see, I've been around for 15, 16 well, years. I'm just a kid starting out. No, I, no, 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 no. I, I understand too, that. I've been in the ring, which you haven't. Yeah, so I well, can I've tell you in the who's ring. the better man in this match. I can tell you who's the better man in the next match. And you take this match here right now. See, Goldie Rogers has been all over him. But if he was wrestling a guy like Steve DeSalvo, you know what the, you know what happened? DeSalvo wouldn't be caught in a hole like this, and DeSalvo don't miss too many things either. I'm I'm beginning to believe you're psychic. I'm sorry you feel that way, Ed. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was a compliment. I didn't say psycho, I said psychic. Okay, Goldie Rogers. He's got the 
the headlock on Mr. Shaw, who's having all sorts of problems. Incidentally, he is not, is not a, any relation to Mike Shaw, who now calls himself Mukka Singh. This Shaw is spelled S-C-H-A-U. Wayne Hart, the referee, yeah? Yeah, getting back to last week, of course, you know, uh, interviewing DeSalvo, you saw what happened. You know, he kind of grabbed my expensive suit, you know. I had a long talk with him this evening, too, and I told him if he ever did it again, I just might change my mind because I'd hit him. And when I hit him, he'll stay down. Don't touch me, I told him. You did that, eh? Yeah, you saw it, and you were happy about it, too. I saw the smile on your face. I don't think it was I fun. thought it was interesting. I thought it was... A fascinating slice of life. Goldie Rogers. Ten minutes gone. Ten he minutes. is in pyrotechnical blue pants here tonight. What a lovely combination is pyrotechnical blue pants with his puke yellow boots. I mean, that is charming. That's charming. I think he looks lovely. <laughs> lovely. That's the operative word, I guess. Mamma mia! He took him for a ride. Yes, he did. Proud as saying to Shaw, do the job. Get it done. Something's got to give here. Caught him beautifully. He's shown a little moxie here. Gets only a two count. It invariably takes a long time to put Goldie away, if indeed you can do it. Power slam. Man, he flattened him, too. Just two. Well, I tell you, it's, uh, Shaw's taking it right to him. And, uh, hey, Goldie, uh, I'm expecting him to come up with a big move, but I haven't saw him come up. And Shaw's been all over him. And I tell you, Goldie better get up real quick because this will be the upset of the hour. <laughs> You sound a little nervous there. You sound a little nervous, but you see, he was too far from the ropes. Dumb. You're right, Ed. He was right, and I tell you, too, he should have taken advantage of the match earlier on when he had Goldie Rogers on the ropes. He just let, let the open, and hey, Goldie's taking it to him now. Well, he's learning his lessons, this young man. He's got a lot of potential. I'm not knocking that. Maybe he's learned something in this match. You don't bend down and wait for him to come off the ropes. There's the neck breaker, and that might well do it. Cover one, two, three. There it is. There don't, it is. Don't count Goldie Rogers out. I told you that he stays a lot for the last, and he came on in the last minute and 55 seconds, and he just destroyed uh, Kim you're, you're very relieved, aren't you? Oh, I sure you am. You liked that, didn't you? Yeah. I sure do. Totally like unbiased, aren't you? Uh, no, yeah, I'm not unbiased. No, I can tell you that. Okay. In the ring, Johnny Smith, the former Commonwealth champion, the one-time champion, the ex-champion, Johnny Smith, 228 out of Manchester against J.T. Law, 232, Austin, Texas, one fall, 15 minutes, Jurgen Herman, the referee. Well, I can tell you one thing, talking to Johnny Smith earlier in the program, he was, he was mad. I tell you, I couldn't get about two words out of him in the dressing room. I tried to interview him, he, he almost knocked me over, and I really can't blame him for doing it, because I tell you, the way he got robbed last week, it was not television, so you people out there really don't know, so I'm telling you the truth, he got robbed by Chris Benoit. He got beaten by Chris Benoit. Let's change that verb, the word is beaten. And the fact is that he's Mr. Anonymous in that ring now. Just one of a long line of former champions. J.T. Lobb coming out of Austin. Good looking young man, came in with a big cowboy hat. Now well, a complaint by old. Johnny Smith. What's he complaining about, it Vaseline? Was, yeah, it was certainly a big letdown for Smith to, uh, to get beat, you know, or to get robbed. I should say get robbed because I watched the whole match. Do you want a handkerchief? I don't I know. I mean, you want to dry your eyes? But I'll tell you, he can have a letdown here in this ring against J.P. Law. You know, he's got to go out and take the match right to J.P. Law because uh, J.P. Law's got the opportunity to put a loss on him here today, which would be That's dreadful. That's right. That's right. It would enhance 
J.T. Law's standings. At the moment, he is not rated in the mid-heavyweight division. What did you think of the match last weekend? The I match last it. week was pretty wild, and I thought Chris Benoit scored a very deserved victory. You thought it was deserved? You Absolutely. Did? No question. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. And I'm going to ask the audience, would they believe me or would they believe you? Well, of course, you know, the audience would believe you because my views are completely different. I'm telling it from being in the ring and being a professional wrestling, one of the very, very best. And I told you earlier in the show that I might be coming out of retirement and putting the trunks back on. I can on. hardly wait. Yeah, I can hardly wait, too, because I'd show a few of these guys what wrestling's all about. But, you know, Johnny Smith, I don't blame him for getting mad because it was first-class robbery. You won't let go, will you? That's why you call up. They call you Bulldog, I guess. Anyhow, I call you Bull something else. Uh, no, I won't say that. Anyway, J.T. Law is having his problems here against Johnny Smith. I, think, I mean, listen, really. Now, listen, uh, I think you're great. I think you're a great announcer. There's not one time in my life that I'll ever knock you or disagree with you because I say, hey, listen, you've been around for some time, and I just think that you're a great contribution to the television uh, wrestling fans, but sometimes you are wrong, and I know some announcers fail to understand when they're wrong. And that's why I'm telling you to help you out a little bit, Ed. Oh, oh, what a kindly act. <laughs> Very kind of you. I'm really impressed. I spend much more time with you. I may be depressed. I don't know. Anyway, at mid-ring, it's Law against Smith. Jurgen Herman looks on. Law having a little trouble getting going here. It's not surprising because the British Bruiser, although I'm kidding about him being the ex-champion, nonetheless, he's a great fighter. Great fighter. Well, a slight miscalculation. Johnny's got a problem. But now the problem belongs to the law. Yeah, and i tell you the truth, I think that Johnny Smith is going to wrap it up real quick. How about that? You always got the answer. It's all over. Okay. Smith certainly looking very workmanlike. Oh, he's just manhandling him now. He certainly give him the standing up position suplex. He give him the side suplex. Now he's given, you know what this is, don't you? The big pile driver, right. I do believe. And I just think, I, I can't see Jake Cover. getting out of it. Uh-oh. He could have beat him, but you know, like I told you, he was mad. He's going to pick him up and give him another one. That's nasty. He's going to drive him again. Five minutes gone. One, two, three. A very cocky Johnny Smith scoring the win here. And certainly, he, I've got to admit, he looked very impressive. Yeah, he looked very impressive. There's no doubt that he wants to get a crack at Benoit real quick, as quick as possible, to get his title back. You know, he lost a lot of his friends, you know, when he lost the title. So he's going to come back, believe me, and mark it on a calendar that Johnny Smith will be back. The Oracle has spoken. <laughs> Wayne Hart, very knowledgeable referee, explaining the rules to the Cuban commandos, which is a joke. The Cuban assassin, 235 out of Havana. Just a bubble off plum, I think he is. Comrade Jerry Morrow, 238 Martinique. And they're in against the Power Twins. Larry Powers of New York and David Powers of New York, each at 275. It's one fall, 20-minute time. I don't know which is which. Let me ask you a question. You just said, big joke giving them the rules and regulations. Hey, the Commandos have been wrestling as a team for 12, 13 years. You mean to tell me that they don't know the rules and regulations? That's then? what I mean. I mean, why bother telling them, right? Well, they understand the rules and regulations if a referee was given it to them properly. But you know Wayne Hart. He's biased. 
He's nothing of the sort. Last year, he was referee of the year. By the way, I must tell you about a few of the awards given for the best of 88. Top heavyweight, Maka Singh. Top mid heavyweight, Johnny Smith. Best technical wrestler, Owen Hart. Most improved is Biff Wellington. Most sportsmanlike, Chris Benoit, Rookie of the Year. Who was Vulcan the second? Vulcan Singh. Vulcan Singh. Good and the time. most outstanding wrestler, Chris Benoit. Best heavyweight, it goes on and on, but those are the primary individual awards. The outstanding wrestler of the year, Chris Benoit? That's it. I don't believe that one minute. Well, that's what the vote me? was. The you editors tell me that he's the best of all. That's what the vote is. That's all I'm telling you. It was an all-star vote. Thousands of patrons filed their ballots, and there you go. I'd have liked to have been there when they counted those ballots. Okay, let's see what's clicking in the ring right now. Look at that. Oh, power. Is that power? That's power. I tell you, I've been watching them now for about a week. Uh, they're a little slow on a few things they do, but they got the power and the strength behind them, you know, which could uh, be a great team. But, you know, they got to get their finer things together. And I'll tell you, this match against the Cuban Commandos tonight on television will either make them or break them in. And I can go out and live and say that the Cuban Commandos are just too much for the Power Twins. I don't know what your feelings of it is. I prefer to see what happens, but I'm funny that way. I don't go in with a bias. I just want to see what happens. Which power twin is this? That's Larry. That's Larry. Are you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm positive. I could pick him out. Okay, that's Larry. If I am to believe my compatriot here, and thus I assume this is David coming into the ring. Looks like the Cubans out on patrol. Boy, he's a tough little hombre, isn't he? You hear those smashes to the chest? Oh! Well, what is this? I just can't believe what, what is I'm this? Seeing. A little chicken licking here by Jerry Morrow. Comrade looks a little bit worried. You know, I'm going to tell you, I sense something is wrong with this team. And I tell you, I think I see maybe a mix-up somewhere. But I think the Cubans will get it together, and I think they'll show the people out in television land just what kind of a great team they are. But they have not shown that tonight, Ed. Well, the man in the saran wrap outfit Gets out of the ring to commiserate with Jerry Morrow. The weasel. Yeah, he's help. he'll help a lot. Listen, he got a hold of Jerry Morrow and the Cubans. Hey, settle it down. Don't make any mistakes. That'll cost us winning this match. Because they've got to win this match. Yeah, they are beginning to sink in the standings. And they know that full well. Are you going to wish me good luck when I go on the British Columbia tour? Why would I wish you good luck? I mean, are you a announcing, or what are you doing? Well, I'll be a special guest announcer, maybe. A special I guest? Yeah, I, I, maybe I'll call. Oh, I love it. I love it. Sorry to interrupt, but it was so pretty. How could I ignore what was happening in the ring? Well, they're really taking it to the Cubans. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to get it together or it's too late. By the time this manager gets through with them, he's really getting the heck now. And when the manager gives you guys, those guys heck, they've got to listen. Well, we've hit the five-minute mark, and the commandos are vacating the premises. I won't forget to say hello to all your friends. I know you got a lot of friends throughout British Columbia. I'll make sure that well, I I'm announce sure you. I'm sure you will. Uh, yeah, I sure will, Ed, because yeah. I really do like you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Boy, I tell you, the Cubans are having far more in the way of problems than I anticipated. 
Run out. There you go. There you go. Are you surprised? I'm really surprised, Dad, you know, because the Cubans probably three or four hours ago got together and lined out their match. But I'll guarantee you, I don't think they outlined it this way. They have absolutely done nothing since this match has started. And I just can't believe what I'm seeing. Here comes the Cuban. But of course, you know, you got to hand it to the Power Twins. Hey, they want to make a name for themselves. And a big victory over the Cuban Commandos today, hey, would boost them right up the ladder. Yes, it would. He got underneath. Beautiful. One of the Power Twins showing power. Crowd says yes. The Power Twins thus far putting on a very impressive show. Have you noticed something, Ed, about the Power Twins? Have you saw the fast tags? That's right. And they, they, they're a fresh man in there, and that's the way to hey, that's the way to be if you're a good tag team match. Tag real quick, get a new fresh partner in there, and hey. My goodness, I tell you what, they just look great to me today, and I don't say that too often. The Cuban Commandos, the Assassin and Comrade Jerry Morrow against Larry and David Powers, the Power Twins out of New York City. One fall, 20-minute time limit. Wayne Hart, referee, looking over the proceedings. The fight has been dominated, really dominated, by the Power Twins. This is the first real rally by the Cubans. Let's see what gives here. Well, a little Cuban showing his toughness, but not for long. He shook himself up, seemed to hurt his hip. Sudden turnabout in the fight. See, he, he just reminded me again, this is for him. This is the way he softened. You know, that neck breaker is one of the worst things that can ever happen to a professional wrestler. Uh. When I was in the ring, Ed, I dreaded it when somebody put a neck breaker on because I tell you what, your whole body changes. And I tell you, you think you're, you're paralyzed. And that's what the power twin is happening right now. They're going to take it to him now. There's the cover, it's a two, and that's all, whoa! Well, he just threw 240 pounds off him like it was a baby. I'll tell you the truth, but he has, if he don't get over and tag, they'll have him weakened so bad, I have to go out on the limb and say, this match could be over. I hate to argue with you, but it's 275 pounds. Even more impressive. Well, but more impressive, you're right. All right. What's going on here? Here comes Morrow. He runs him with a chair outside the ring. He's going to do it again. Okay. If he comes back from this, I see he took advantage of him out on the floor. Uh, the referee was talking to the power twin. The power twin should have been in his corner. Well, that's how silly they are. And he got hit with a chair twice. It would have been an automatic disqualification. Should have been. Yeah, but the referee wasn't there to count or to look at it. To look at it. Okay. The Cubans try to clean up here on the Power Twins. They are identical, and I don't know which one it is in the ring. It's Larry. Ten minutes, John. Ten minutes. Every time I ask him, it's Larry. There's two. It's Larry every time. I'm not sure that you know. They are really identical. Anyway, my compatriot here says it's Larry. He can't get over to make that tag. Adam coming in. They're beginning to shine. Well, you know, Jerry Morrill's a tremendous athlete. Let's not take anything away from 
There was a man, probably 240 pounds, sent a drop kick that some 20-year-olds can't do. It was just a tremendous drop kick on behalf of Jerry Moore, and it stunned the big guy. Here comes the Cuban assassin. He's made a tag already. And Morrow's going to do an overland flight. Boy, did he squash him. Two, just, just two. Tag. In comes the Cuban. Crowd is praying that he'll get over to David for the tag, but he can't seem to do so. You even said David. You see, I told you I was right. Well, I know it's either Larry or David. One of the above into the corner. Watch now. Got him with a clothesline. Can he tag? Get the arm up. Make the tag. He makes the tag. Here comes David. He says, Welcome. Welcome to Canada. Going after both men as the Cubans get sent flying. Couple of beautiful slams, and he's gonna do a little knocking, knocking. Good job here by David Powers. Takes him over the top. Big elbow cover, one, two. I might have had him, but for the interference. Yeah, well, that's a smart team. I used to do the same thing. You? Boy, what a slam, one, two. And again, it's broken up. Now, Larry is getting his dander up. Larry hammering away in the corner. This is terrific. Now, a little confrontation. Who's fighting who? He went over the top. He was thrown over the top. There's going to be a disqualification. I'll tell you, Larry Powers deliberately fell over the top he rope. He did not. He was thrown. Let me tell you something, Ed. You may think he was thrown. I'd like to see that one more time in slow motion, and I'll guarantee you he went over the top rope on his own. That's You're a wrong. bad call on the referee. You're wrong. It's David Powers. David went over the rope. Look at this. Look at this. The Power Twins aren't taking any of that garbage. And so it's house cleaning time for the Power Twins. Very impressive showing. How about that? Just a minute, ask me what I thought about the match. I don't want it. Here's Jim Davies. Well, it's Muck and Sing, Volk and Sing, and the Weasel. I'll tell you what, Muck and Sing, you can run, but you can't hide because DeSalvo and Blackman have you in a lumberjack match for those belts. Who said we wanted to run? Who said we wanted to tide? They're the ones been running from us. We're glad to have this match. We'll take this match. Volker and I, Abu talked about it. You know something? We just want to end this match tonight and show what a great tag team we really are. Listen to this. Abu, we've been talking with Abu. He wants to break in now and show all you people what we've been teaching them. There's big tag teams coming out for us, Abu. What do you think? Makan Volkham, number one. British Bulldog. Right, Vag Power Train. Rock and Roll Express. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Vulcan Singh, what have you got to say? To salvo your big, big strong arms. Steve Blackman, your karate kicks. Nothing's gonna beat us. We're the biggest tag team around. We're big time. We're coming through. Bring on anybody. Bring the dogs back. Bring anybody. Nobody's taking these away from the vice. No way. Everybody keeps whispering behind our back. Oh, you're lucky you beat the British Bulldogs once. You beat them once. I hear in two weeks they want to come back. Well, we're not hard to find, you little washed up poodles. You get back here, you come after us, and you'll spend the rest of your life eating milk bones through a straw because we'll knock every tooth out of your mouth, Bulldogs. You come back two weeks, two hours, two days. We'll be here as international champions, and you come looking for us. We're not hard to find, you two hobos. Chicago undefeated Lethal Larry Cameron. Bring it out, Sir Jim Davies. Introducing Lethal Larry Cameron. 
And now the people's champion, Ron Ritchie, about to come into the ring. This is a very important match. Now entering the ring, the former people's champion, uh, Ron Ritchie. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like what like is it. that? I like it. You know, you're like, he cheated. Richie's been getting a little cocky the last two or three weeks. I like this. I like this. I like what I'm seeing. You like what you're seeing. You like to see a guy cheat, attack a guy before the bell sounds. I can't believe the sort of behavior that you are endorsing, Bulldog Brown. Win at any cost. But now, listen, boys and girls, don't listen. Be a sport, and you've got respect. Ron Ritchie, of course, hails from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Fine wrestler, lethal Larry Cameron, 265, is out of Chicago. Ritchie at 245 from Winnipeg. And this is a best uh, one fall of 30 minutes. That's what I'm trying to find on my program. It's a 30-minute time limit. Cameron going to work in the corner. Richie having problems getting going. And that's because of the kamikaze attack that hit him just as he got into the ring. First yellow card for Larry Cameron. Now a yellow card. It's about time. Big suplex. And I've seen Richie in this kind of a situation before. Cameron should beware, because when Richie blows a gasket, the place explodes. And everything stops. I agree with you. But I tell you, I think that's why Lisa Larry Cameron's had trouble with Richie the last couple weeks. And he, talking to him early also, he told me he has to get him right from the beginning, and he knows he can beat him in the middle of the ring. Oh, my. Richie in all sorts of trouble. I might further note that very few men, only one that I can recall, has gone past five minutes with Cameron. Yes, I tell you, uh, Ron Richie has held him. You know, he's went 10, the 12 minutes. One. The only That's one. The only one. Uh, this match, I know. Hey, I'm not going to go out on a limb and predict the winner. Really? Uh, yeah. I know down deep that this match is not over, and it's far from being over. And a Larry Cameron better not take any chances, because if he does, it's going to be game over for him. That's a very nice announcing job, Bob. Thank you. Very Ed. good. Very good. Crowd trying to exhort Richie to come on. But out goes Richie. You see, I think this is where the downfall comes for lethal Larry Cameron. Now, he had him in the ring. He had him at his mercy. He had him down, all but finished. And he goes and throws him through the... I think that's kind of silly on Larry Cameron's uh, mind. I don't know why he did that. Now, he's given uh, he's given Richie a breather. That's what he's doing. Very good analysis, Bob. You're quite right, and he's done it again. He's got recovery time outside that ring, and he invariably winds up interrupting the count, although... He Comes in close to interrupt the count again, you see. He's given that Richie 10 seconds, 15 seconds at a time. And as long as Richie's second out on the floor, call. he's going to get his time. second win. And I'll tell you, I think Larry's making a mistake. And I'm really shocked because I thought Larry would have put him away by now. Richie, can he work his way in? Couple of shots to the midsection. Block the punch. Block that punch beautifully and does it again. Couple of elbow smashes in there. Look out. 
Richie Stander is up. What did I tell you? There he goes now. Good hip toss. And he says to the crowd, I'm going now. Off those ropes. Look up, Nelly. Very nice elbow. <laughs> He's going to explode. We're at the five minute mark now. All of a sudden, Lethal Larry Cameron does not look invincible. Of course, this is the best man he's yet met in this territory. Just rearranges his ears a little. I'm shocked at what I'm seeing. Well, I tell you, Rich, he's really come on. I'm really shocked. I'm surprised. But this is a great match for him, like I told you early in the show. Probably the highlight of his wrestling career is this match. Well, I might doubt that because he's held the North American title previously. Here he comes with his great finish. One. Just a two count. Well, he belted the manager. Unfortunately, unfortunately, his attention was diverted. And this gives Cameron the opportunity to go at him, but they're both after each other outside the ring. I think they're going to be counted out. There it is. Well, there it is. I'll tell you the truth. I'm uh, Richie's just exploded here, and I thought Richie should have been disqualified for hitting nah, the manager. Nah, nah. Let's, let nah, me tell nah, you something, Get Ed. serious. The manager never did nothing, and Richie hit him. I think the red card should have been coming He up. should not have been up at ringside. Should not have been up on the ring apron. But both of them, both of them wind up being counted out outside the ring. Well, first of all, Ron Ritchie, let me remind you one thing. You certainly had no business hitting the manager. You should have taken the match to him. I think that's your fault for the last two weeks that you haven't taken it and you haven't been at 100%. So I don't think you're qualified to wrestle Mr. Cameron. Well, I want to say something, Bob Brown. I know it's side of the fence you're coming from, mister. So I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to these people. And I'm going to tell you what, Larry Cameron, I came here tonight, brother, expecting a wrestling match, and you jumped me coming into the ring. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Cameron, the only thing you've done tonight was fire Ron Ritchie up. And next week, you want a brawl, brother? You got a brawl here. Here, I'm going to tell you what, Cameron, the war's only started, and we're going to find out if the coming up is worth the going down. You better settle down, mister, because I'll tell you, if he gets tangles with Cameron any more time, he won't be able to talk permanently. That's what I think. He should have kept his match with Cameron and don't hit the manager. I mean, I'm, well, I'm, I'm the you, star you of the had show. Kind of, you had kind of a tough time. This Richie's a pretty good scrapper. What do you mean tough? I guess after a while you're going to say it close, huh? But you know, Mr. Ed, I can't call you Mr. Ed, huh? No, close on account in horseshoe and hand grenade. In this case, bad breath, which you got, brother. But look here, let me tell you something. Run Richie. I could have pinned him any time I got ready. But I just want to see what the guy was made of, you know? I kind of turned him inside out. And he's stupid enough that he want another shot at me. I tell you, Run Richie, you should get your head examined. You got more guts than brain. But I tell you what, if you ever climb in the ring with me again, whether it be Edmonton, Calgary, it don't make no difference. I'm going to finish you off once and for all. Because I am the world's greatest athlete. Yes, he is. Hard to none, and I always get my man. Always. And the manager, old six eyes here. What were you doing up on the ring apron? What's wrong? I was on the apron. I was protecting my investment. Back jumpers. You saw what we did to back jumpers. And what we would continue to do to back jumpers. If you got on the ring, we would back jump you. So let me tell you, Ron Ritchie, tighten up your spurs, baby, because you're not going to go up well against the lethal man, because he's going to tear you from limb to limb, and anybody else like Don Morocco who wants a shot at this man, get All ready. Right. All right, turn it off. Turn Don't it off. Turn, turn it off. You heard me? We'll Don't be right back. Turn it off. Get out of here. Get out of here.
If you think you don't have time for a full hot breakfast, take a look at this. McCain's Super Fast Breakfast. Just pull off the tab, pop it in your microwave, and in just three minutes, it's ready. A full and delicious breakfast. Put a little zip in your morning with McCain Microwave Breakfast. They're ready in just three minutes. Super Fast Breakfast from McCain. The full breakfast you thought you didn't have time for. Someone went too far. Someone will have to pay. Didn't you say don't worry, we'll cover it up. Someone got away with murder. Until now, True Believer starts Friday at select theaters. Ski World, race reports, equipment pointers, and a look at some of North America's favorite trails. Ski World is every week on TSN. The ring introductions for Chris Benoit and the Great Gamma have been completed. This is a non-title affair. It's one fall, and there's a 45-minute time limit. Benoit, the very popular champion, out of Edmonton at 218, and the Great Gamma at 220 from Karachi, Pakistan, a former title holder, and the love has not been lost on this pairing, I'll tell you. Well, I tell you, I was surprised with the announcement of the Outstanding Wrestler of the Year. You know, like I told you earlier in the show, I don't believe it for one moment, because I think there's a lot of better wrestlers than Chris Benoit, and tonight you'll find out, because I think Gamma, this is the match that he's been waiting for. He knows that he's a better man, but he'll just have to go out to prove it to you, Ed Whelan, and the television fans. I'm predicting a big win for the great Gamma tonight. Well, we're going to have the fight first, if that's all right with you. We'll have it first. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's not over till it's over, right? Okay. Gamma. Going to work on Benoit here in the early going. I'm constantly amazed by the popularity of Gama in many of the European countries and the African states. And here, it's a horse of a different color, and now he's getting what for? Benoit banging away at him. That knocks him down. I'll tell you, this Benoit's a worker. Right now, Mr. Gamma has the tiger by the tail. Well, I tell you, a lot of it, I just, you know, I told you earlier that uh, my feelings are not with Benoit in this match. I think he's cocky, and he knows he's cocky. He's a champion, and what the heck, he's got nothing to lose in this match and everything to gain. He thinks he's going to go out and just destroy the great Gamma, but I'll guarantee you one thing, Ed Whalen. This match here is going to separate the boys from the men, and when the smoke clears the ring, I'll guarantee you the great Gamma will show you why that he's the number one contender right now. The, cost, the gospel, according to the Bulldog, Bob Brown, I choke on it. Okay. Right now it's Benoit pitching, and Gamma is catching. Wayne Hart, the referee, looking on, the hip ties, and he ties him up. Of course, you know and I know that the great Gamma will be trying to slap the Cobra hold on Benoit, something he did last week illegally, illegally. Watch this. What did he do illegally? He put the cobra hold on him. You were there, you saw it. Well, don't you think, Ed, that you know you're in the ring, you're the third man in the ring, you're in the view, and what you, Chris Benoit invited him into the ring and says your cobra will work. So what you call him, Greg Gamma just went in and put it on him and well, put him out. He was not invited in the ring. He did a bushwhacking, and you know it. Okay. You are watching Chris Benoit and the Great Gamma. Let's 
certainly great news that the British Bulldogs are headed back. I bet you you're happy. Bad, bad news for the Commandos, the Sing Boys. Do you think that the British Bulldogs are a better team than the Sings? Of course. Well, you know, uh, I watched them right here in this ring lose the title. Uh, of course, no, you're going to say Johnny Smith ran his head in the post, but that wasn't true. Nobody saw it on television. <laughs> and I'm just calling as I see him. Uh, I'm, I'm think the Johnny Smith are interfered, and Johnny Smith was the man who assured that the Sing Sing boys grabbed off the belt. Now watch this. Got underneath. Nice clothesline. You know what I like about the mid heavyweights? The speed. Yeah, it's tremendous. You know, when you get these two guys or Johnny Smith together in, in these matches, I'll tell you, Ed, I've been on the, um, I've been following wrestling right across for the last two months, and I'm just amazed with the attendance that these professional wrestlers draw all through the all through Canada. It's just been great, and I'll tell you the truth. They see the number one sport. When you see the likes of Gamma Singh, Chris Benoit, Johnny Smith, Vocal, and Maka Singh, Steve the Savile, and Blackman, you're seeing the best, and no wonder they're drawing capacity crowds all over the area. Five minutes. We're at the five minute mark. I swear, the weasel one day is gonna blow a gasket. I think he's leaking a little oil right now. I'd like Nothing wrong with him that a little Dr. Chase's nerve remedy wouldn't solve. Anyway, back at mid-ring, Gama turning the tide, but you will see that tide coming and going throughout this bout, I'm sure. They're very evenly matched. God, he caught him right on the nose. I think he might have loosened a tooth or two. It's a little hard on the dentine smile. You see what Benoit's doing now? He's getting the crowd behind by calling the great gamma a chicken. How can you call a great athlete like the great gamma and his great manager chickens? I, I, you know, to me, that's just an insult. And that's why I say a lot of times that Chris Benoit is a smart-nosed young punk. And he's got to be taught a lesson, Ed. It's an insult to the chickens to be classified with gamma. I mean, really. But he amazes me. Amazing. You know, he's in trouble. He comes out of it. He gets in trouble again. And I guess that's why he's a champion. He's you know, not a champion. Well, I'm saying Chris Benoit's a champion. Oh, you're Chris Benoit. I got confused. I thought you were talking about your favorite subject, Gamma. Oh, no, no. I guess that's why Ben was a champion. Of course, you know, everybody didn't see it on television last week. But, you know, he, he stole the belt. He did from... not steal the belt. He did not steal the belt. And I wish you'd stop lying to our audience. Good gracious. There should be truth on television. Isn't it amazing, the letters that keep pouring into the television station? How great they watch wrestling, professional wrestling at its best. What a fine, outstanding job Bulldog Bob Brown's doing. I what didn't a read fine, that part. What fine, outstanding job Ed Whalen's doing. What a great team. But you always notice they're putting my name in front of you. And I didn't that's notice a little that. scary, you know. I didn't notice that. You need prescription glasses, maybe? All right, look at this death lock. Look at this death lock. You're getting writer's cramp from writing letters to yourself? Is that your problem, Bunky? Huh? Look at Benoit! Boy, there's a lot of gimp and take, hammer and tongue in this match. Here we go, look out, Nelly pulled him down, beautiful one, two, but got the ears boxed once again. Now the takedown, and again it's Benoit, this time with a step over toe hold. I watched an old time Matt classic the other day, 
Dory Funk Jr. against Gene Koneski. And Koneski submitted to the spinning toe hole. Do you remember that one? It was a great match, and I was in attendance on that match. And I'll tell you, too, it's one of the greatest matches I've watched for a long, long time. Because, you know, when Dory Funk Jr. beat Gene Koneski, he beat a great athlete. You know, Koneski was a great football player up here in Canada. And I'll tell you the truth. And to beat Gene Koneski, you have to have something. And Dory Funk had it that night. And that spinning toe hole made famous by his famous father, Dory Sr. It was a great match, Ed. Well, I tell you, yep, I saw that match. It goes back <laughs> decades. But I saw it on film. Very fascinating. I've All right. I watched a lot of great ones of me, too. I seem to have forgotten. They didn't stick in my memory, Bulldog. Why would that be? I remember Stomper and the late Dave Rule and Whipper Billy Watson and Gene Koniski and Fritz Von Erich and uh, a lot of guys. Gene Koniski, Lou Thaz, Dory Funk. The list goes on and on. I, you really do go back a long time, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. I've been around a while. Bulldog, I saw one of your matches the other day on a Matt Classic section of our show. You cheated a lot. You cheated. Look at this. Mama Mia is Benoit going to work. He doesn't want to be held back by the referee. The referee shouldn't hold him back. Let him go. Let he, him go. He should be disqualified. What for? Well, because he won't what listen for? to the referee. This is action, great action. Two great campaigners here, Gamma and Benoit. See, Gamma wants to cool it down a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Malfunction at the junction. Did you hear what the fans had to say just a while ago? Check Gamma for a foreign object. I didn't see no foreign object. Did you, Ed? I uh, thought I saw something. I thought I saw it coming from his weasel at ringside. Well, I certainly didn't see it. And I'm not going to go out and accuse somebody unless I see it. I saw it. I saw it. I just and don't think he needs anything to I speak. I couldn't believe what I saw. There's something strange going on here. I think he's got it in his trunks. Now watch out. This is going to be the power. No. Boy, he broke that shoulder virtually. One, two, just two. in a daze. I don't even think Benoit knows where he is. Chris Benoit getting shaken up. Have you and the weasel made up? Never, ever, never. Uh, the great Gala, you're watching him against Chris Benoit. This is one fall with a 45 minute time limit. And right now, Gamma is dominating. Been a great fight. Has he got something in his hand? Has he got something in his hand? Just a pair of fists. He doesn't need any foreign object in. The guy's a great athlete. I tell you, I don't think, you know, the words sing across the country. Hey, they're not violent people. They just go out and win. I see. I see. Claw hold being applied to the shoulder muscles. He's not dead. Ran into a knee. I'm looking a little frustrated. You know, yeah, you know, and it doesn't even look like he's taking a breather. You know, it looks like, you know, this match has been going on maybe for 12, 15 minutes, and Gamma Singh hasn't even broke out with a sweat yet. So I think he's having a lot of fun in there, and he's just torching this Chris Benoit. 
I'm seeing a different fight. It's been pretty even, and Benoit's been pretty spectacular. Gama trying to turn him into a crab. He does it. Boston Crab, but he's using the ropes. He's using the ropes. The referee spots it. You see, Ed, he lost his balance. He oh, had, sure. He yeah, had to hold it. Rope. I understand yeah, that. Thank you. What are you smoking? <laughs> Cover one, two. Don't forget this is non-title, although Benoit is the Commonwealth mid heavyweight champion. Big suplex. Lots of pressure. Gama covering one and two and not quite. Let me remind you about a champion. You know, when Johnny Smith was the Commonwealth champion, the man defended the title every night. Here tonight, we're looking at two great wrestlers in the ring, and I'm wondering why Benoit doesn't have the title on the line. Is that telling me that he's worried about the great gamble? Not at all. He's got to earn his way back. Oh, I see. Don't you think the name, the great gamble, is a title to a championship match? He'll get it if he scores here. And we are now at the 15-minute mark. Oh, man, that was a close line. Really caught him right smack on the old Adam's apple. Boy, he went down outside the ring. Gamma in control of the proceedings at the moment. One fall, 45 minute time limit. Gamma can't keep him out of the ring. Look at this! Whoa, oh no. Oh no. Now Gamma's going to fly. Gamma is going to fly! Turnover, one, two, oh, chest two. Oh my, oh, that was nervous. a great move. That was a great move on Benoit's part. Small package, one, two! Benoit with a great rally here. Superb match. Benoit giving him what for? Boy, is he in control now. Totally in control. Watch this. Cover one, two. He can't quite put him away. You're speechless. I can't, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Cover one, two. Again, close call. Pulls him over one. Just one. He lost him. Something's got to give here. Oh, ran into the referee. That could be trouble. Benoit. The matches continue with no referee. This should be quite interesting. Caught him with a headbutt on the side of the head. Oh, here's the weasel. Now he's got it. Knuckle dusters. Knuckle dusters. Caught him on the back of the head. Gave him to the weasel. Referee gets up. It's a two. And it's a three. A miscarriage of justice. Now let me remind you of what. Let me remind you of what. Well, I did. I really did see. Put on your glasses. Put on your glasses. Whose fault it really is? It's the fault of Chris Benoit. Why did he go out to the manager? 125 pounds. Because the manager is a nerd. That's why. And he was interfering. And he had no business being up on the apron. And you should have seen the knuckle dusters. They were huge. I didn't see them. And the bottom line, the great gamble won. I can't believe, I can't believe what you're saying. Anyway. It's a great win for the great gamble. Here's, here's Jim Davies. Well, great gamble with the weasel. 
You I won, but you it. cheated. You used, what do you mean? You used knuckle dusters. What is this little duster? weasel passed you the knuckle dusters. I had dusters. no knuckle dusters on me. Yeah, you can right. look at the camera. You can go back on the replay if you like. All you see is this white tape on my wrist, around my fingers. A lot of people may have thought I used knuckle dusters, but you know me, Jim Davies. I don't resort to illegal tactics. I they know you, and you do resort to you cheating tactics. You know better tactics. than that. They don't call me Fist of Stone for nothing because all I gave him was this one big knockout punch. He went down. He used out. Lights are out for Chris Benoit. I had him in the middle of the wrist. One, two, three. Did you know I want to make one more comment? When he walked in here, saw me standing on the opposite corner. There was water running down his pants leg. I wonder what that was. Looks to me like Chris Benoit was a little bit nervous. Well, I would be nervous, too, if I was in this ring facing myself. There's too, not too many men in professional wrestling that would like to step inside the squared circle against the great gamma, because I am, I am a winner. A lot of people might think of me as Superman, Jim Davies. Uh, I'm not, not too really, many. I'm not really Superman. Maybe to you, maybe to the people out there, I am Superman, because there's not too many people inside professional wrestling that can face me one-on-one. -on -one. Chris Benoit, your days are numbered. That belt, you got around your waist. I've had it for more times than anybody else in professional wrestling. And one more time, it's going to be around my waist. So all I want you to do is put it on the line. Because, brother, I guarantee you, it's going to be mine. Okay, that's the word from the cheater. Now let us go to ringside where Ed Whalen is with Chris Benoit. Knuckle dusters. Absolutely what they were. I imagine it felt like a ton of bricks hitting the back of your head. Ed, I wasn't sure what he hit me with. Gamma Singh, I told you last week, if you want a title shot, you're going to have to earn a title shot. If you want to play the game that way, Gamma Singh, next week, you'll get your title shot. You bring anything you want into this ring, because I'm going to prove to all these people that the belt will still remain around my waist. OK. Chris Benoit will be back in just a moment. The Singh boys going into action in a tag team affair against the two Steves. Should be great action. We'll be right back. You see what the Salvo was doing? He was waiting. He was waiting because he wants the people to cheer for him. This is not the way you're going to win a tag team title at. He had an opportunity to put him away with the pile driver, and he didn't do it. A silly, silly wrestling on behalf of black men at the salvo. Boy, he just missed, and he hit his head on the canvas, giving Boak and Singh an opportunity for a rally here. This is a one-fall affair with a 60-minute time limit. Moving toward the 10-minute mark. I would say, Ed, watching the Lumberjacks, watching the match, I would say the match has been pretty even. Somebody is going to make a mistake. Somebody is going to lose. And with the mistakes that Blackman and the Savile are making, it could be costly for them. Now, they had an opportunity two or three times during the match, I think, to get a three count. But they just didn't do it. Well, outside of the ring, Larry Cameron starts fighting with the Savile. Instead of throwing him in, they just start a scrap outside the ring. That's not the way the Lumberjack match is supposed to work. Finally, DeSalvo gets in, but Cameron overdoing the lumberjack thing. Let me tell you, Ed. He's not in the match. Well, Cameron... You can't tell me anything. You can't tell me anything. Larry Cameron is not in the match. Well, I'll tell you, he's a lumberjack. That's what he's That's outside all right. the ring No, for. he's not on the outside of the ring to fight. He's outside just to roll a guy back yes, in. What he was trying what to he do. What he did stunk, and you know it. Got him. 
Chris Blackman. Oh, he fouled him on the ropes. Buck and Singh fouled him on the ropes. And so Blackman is shaken up. For the International Tag Team Championship belts, a lumberjack match. Muck and Singh and Folk and Singh against the challengers, Strangler Steve DeSalvo and Steve Blackman. We've gone past the 10 minute mark. One hour time limit. If I were to score it, I would give the edge to the two Steves. But at the moment, the Sing Sing combination coming back. Jurgen Herman overseeing proceedings. A dozen wrestlers planted around the ring. Pulls him down one. Just a two. What's Mucken doing in there? There's a yellow card, the second yellow card. Just two. Didn't he go over and make a tag? What was the yellow card for? He didn't make a tag. Did not make a tag, and you know it. Main event. Boy, it has been an eventful card. There's a one, there's a two. You see, this is where the champions have made a mistake. They had an opportunity yes, to they beat did. Blackman, and they didn't take advantage. If they go on and lose, lose this match, they can thank Mr. Vocal Singh for that. That's right, he could have finished it off. Wanted to show off there. Mark and Singh going after his face. Johnny Smith is holding him down. He had Blackman by the hair. That's terrible. That's terrible. Came over and stuck his nose into somebody he else's He straightened business. it out. He straightened it out. Nose into somebody's business. The Singh boys against Steve DeSalvo and Steve Blackman. Blackman's the one in trouble. Vulcan Singh going to work. Drives him across. Caught him beautifully. Caught him beautifully, but he's got to make a tag, and he can't get past Vulcan Singh. They've been really putting a number on, I'll tell you, this Mr. Blackman. I, can, I, I don't know. The punishment that he's taken, I don't know how, if he's going to come out of this or not, but he better make a tag if he can. Because this thing could be over right now. See what I mean? He could have done it. He could rue the day. Yeah, that's right, Ed. You're right. And, uh, and, hey, a mistake like this could cost him this match. Twice he showed off to the crowd. Wanted to give Blackman some more. When he had him. Bear hug being applied now by Muck and Singh. This is a great finishing hold on Maka Singh. See, he knows that Blackman has been suffering punishment for the last two or three minutes. If he can get this bear hug on the right way, this, like I say, this match could be over because Blackman would give up. But then again, don't count him short. Well, he knocks Maka down the tag. There it is. The salvo coming in. Crowd saying, go get him. Gets him into the corner. He's jamming away at him there. DeSalvo, he's got enormous strength. Boy, what a hip toss. Boy, he wheeled him right across the ring. 380 pounds like he's. One, two, oh. just. Volk and Singh broke it up. 15 minutes gone. 15 We're at minutes. the 15-minute mark. Close line, cover, one, two, that's all. They're showing another yellow card. Watch it now! 
Oh, he caught him going by cover one, two. And again, Moken Singh breaks it up. They're going to have to disqualify the Sings at the rate they're, they're going. They're all in the ring now what's going to happen. I'll tell you the truth. Mayhem is broke loose here. The referee's out of it. Oh, my goodness. Everybody's after everybody. The salvo got thrown over the top. Just a minute. Cameron has grabbed. Cameron has grabbed a chair and he took it away from Bulldog. He took it from you. He took the chair from you. Look at this one, two, three. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Mucken and Book and Singh scoring over Strangler Steve DeSalvo and Steve Blackman only because you supplied him with a chair. I didn't supply nobody with a chair. Ed, you're making an acquisition. That, that's not right on behalf of your part. He grabbed my chair and he hit Larry DeSalvo with it. I didn't notice you're trying to stop him. Well, I, well, why should I try to stop him? It's a championship match. I don't want to get involved. Larry Cameron was not supposed to be involved. Well, I'll tell you, I don't think he was involved. I he was know. trying, just a minute now, I he was know. trying to throw. I don't know about working with just you. Just a minute. He was trying to throw the salvo back in the ring. He wouldn't go. He hit oh, him with sure. the chair. All right. Here's an important announcement right here, right now. First of all, earlier tonight, I saw you guys almost get beat by the Cuban commandos. Then back in the dressing room, I hear you telling everybody you want a championship match. I don't think you guys are ready for the championship match. Not now, not next week, or ever. Wait a minute, Bob Brown. I don't like the comments you're making. I don't think they're even worth answering. Now I'm starting to get angry. I don't like these Listen, comments. I don't know where you get off saying those things about us. I know we're new on the block. We're the new kids here. But we'll take on anybody they give us. Right. We'll take on anybody. Okay, you're going to take on somebody, all right? You're going to take on the champions of the world. Well, now me tell me. Up. I'll take on the champions. Listen, we played professional football before we got to wrestle. We know what tough is. We lived in the streets of Manhattan. We know that's it's tough to live in Manhattan. Now, we'll take on anybody that you have to put against us. We're identical twins. We're the only identical twins in professional wrestling. That's right. That's a very good advantage for us. And listen, I know these two guys are tough, these Singh brothers, right? They're brothers, right? But they ain't twins. We're twins, man. We've known each other since we've been born. Uh, let me guarantee you one we thing. Like, me and twins like, will have nothing to do like, with the fair. match when they wrestle the Singhs. I, 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 I think the Singhs will beat you both. Yo. So, you needed a little help from your friends, huh? I didn't see any help out there. I saw my well, brother Larry Mucka right on top of Steve DeSalvo, hey. one, two, three, right in the middle. I call it a good victory. I call it international tag team champions. Vulcan, you know what? They have no reason to cry. That was their match. They asked for it. If you want to challenge us to some kind of match, you got to be smart enough to handle it. You want to invite other people out in your business, then you got to realize they're going to be there to get in your business. They cried. They wanted the match. They got it. Now they lost. They're still crying, wailing. What do they want next? Larry Cameron interfered, and you know it. Now the Power Twins <laughs> want you. The Power Twins want you. They look very impressive. Who? Well, and I've always wondered about them glasses. The day those two look impressive, I'll retire from wrestling. I got a new name for them. The Power Sins. The Power Sins, because it's a sin they ever got a pair of wrestling boots and wrestling tights. They're the two worst wrestlers I've ever seen in my life. You know, if I was twins with them two, I wouldn't even admit the other one was my brother. I'd say, he's not a twin of mine. I'd shave my head and walk backwards. I wouldn't even say he was my brother. They're rotten. Vulcan, they want to challenge us. We beat the Bulldogs. We we beat the Salvo and Blackman, and we'll beat them, and I hope them little poodles, them little dog chow eating bulldogs hurry up and get back here, because we'll they're beat coming. them again, they're too. Coming. We'll beat them they're again, coming. too, Will. They're good, and they're you know it. Again, uh, and you know it. Tweedle you know D it. and Tweedle Dumb, the power twins. Bring them on. You can bring anybody you yeah, want to. We right, beat the bulldogs. Right. Yeah. We'll beat them again, yeah. anyone. Anyway. i got better Rock things to do than continue talking to you. Get out of here. Well, you just tell him to stay out of my, you tell him to stay out of my way. You tell him to stay out of my way. I'm getting out of here. I look forward to seeing you next time, but in the meantime, and in between time, that's it. Another edition of TSN Wrestling. Bye-bye.